Hello, I'm Ben Huber, Technical Service Manager at TopWorks, and today we're going to talk about mounting GO switches. Remember, this is an overview of best practices. Your specific application may vary, so take that into consideration. Second, always remember to use the proper PPE and have it collected before getting started. And finally, when testing or before putting into service, remove all tools and other foreign objects that may have been left behind during this installation. To get started, ensure that the actuator is clean and ready to have instrumentation installed. Confirm that the actuator is mounted or properly supported to install switches. Next, loosely assemble the stem block and its associated operating arm. The operating arm will have the targets mounted to it. Fit the stem block assembly to the stem. Ensure that the stem block is properly seated on the threads of the stem and that it is fully engaged. Verify that the operating arm is perpendicular to the stem. Finally, tighten the stem block bolts to the recommended torque specification. Attach the mounting fixture for the GO switches. At this time, these bolts only need to be hand tightened. Next, assemble the target magnet fixture. Each magnet should include two jam nuts and two star washers. Once again, these can go hand tight for now. Attach the target magnet assembly to the operating arm. When done correctly, the target face should be in parallel with the yoke. This assembly can be hand tightened for now. Ensure that the operating arm can move throughout the full stroke without interference from any of the other assembly pieces. Before mounting the switch to the associated mounting plate, move the first jam nut as far down the barrel of the switch as possible. This will reduce the moment forces on the switch and the bracket once mounted, as the heavier end of the switch will be closer to the mounting point. Attach the switch associated with monitoring the unactuated position. In this example, we are mounting the top switch first as the actuator is direct acting. Set the switch to be axially aligned with the magnet in both the Y and the Z axis. The magnet may require some adjustment to get these aligned. In this example, the switch can be adjusted along the Y axis while the magnet can be adjusted along the Z axis. When correctly aligned, the target magnet should cover approximately 90% of the sensing space. To set the sensing gap, first reference the max sensing distance available in the IOM. In this case, for the C7 nuclear switch, it is a tenth of an inch. Using a feeler gauge equal to the maximum sensing gap, Check 360 degrees around the axially aligned switch and target as seen in the pictures. At no point should the feeler gauge come between the switch and the target. There is no minimum spacing specification, but the switch and target magnet should never come in contact with each other. However, the closer the target magnet, the stronger the contact pressure. Should the feeler gauge fit between the target and the switch, or they are coming in contact, adjust first by threading the magnet in or out based on the direction you need. The nuts for the magnet should both be fully engaged by the threaded barrel. Should you need more adjustment, you can do so with the switch. The switch, however, should be a last resort for adjustment along the x-axis, as the mounting point 
should be kept as far back on the barrel of the switch as possible. Once the sensing gap is properly set, you can begin tightening the connections. Tighten the ghost switch mounting bracket first, followed by the target mount bracket. Double check the sensing gap and axial alignment one more time before tightening the magnet and the switch to their recommended torque specifications. Once everything has been tightened, confirm the sensing gap with the feeler gauge and the axial alignment as well. Stroke the valve and begin installing the second switch aligned with the second target magnet. Remember to move the first jam nut as far down the barrel of the switch as possible. This will reduce the moment force on the switch and bracket once mounted, as the heavier end of the switch will be closer to the mounting point. Repeat the previous steps for attaching the second switch. Be sure to double check the sensing gap and alignment after finally tightening to specification. A full functional test will include testing both the normally open and the normally closed sides of each switch. To fully test both the normally open and the normally closed, you will need to present the target and remove the target for each. For double pull, double throw switches, you need to test each normally open circuit and each normally closed circuit for a total of four circuits. Pick one switch to start with. Connect one lead from a multimeter set to measure resistance to the common connection as designated in your IOM. Connect the second lead to the normally closed connection as designated by your IOM. Without a target present, the switch should read little to no resistance. Present the target and you should read infinite resistance or over the limit as seen in the picture on the left. Now remove your lead from the normally closed side and place it on the normally open side. Without the target present, the, sweet, the switch should read infinite resistance. With the target present, the switch should read little to no resistance as seen in the picture on the right. Repeat the previous steps for the remaining switches. This concludes the training. Remember to replace any temporary covers for quick disconnects and torque down all connections to their specified torque. Thank you.